out. And then later this year, last year, August, a couple got proposed on this stage. And tonight, Christian and I will announce our divorce. Um, <laughs> oh, they're here tonight, too. Good. They stayed together. Um, that's right. That's right. The Wildberries can break up as long as they stay together. And this is fun. I was told just uh, backstage before I came out, I was told that tonight, uh, the people watching around the world is a new record for live stream views watching this event. So hi to everybody all over the globe. There are thousands and thousands of people watching this event, and one stepdog is also tuning in. And I could not be more thrilled to be here in New York City. We have a lot of exciting news. We have a lot of exciting things to announce. And we have two incredible matches that are going to go down tonight. And it gives me great pleasure to say the words that I've longed to say as a youth. You let me do it last year twice. I'm going to go for it again. Live from New York, it's Saturday night. <laughs> But ladies and gentlemen, I am just the Chewbacca to this young man's Han Solo that I'm about to bring to the stage. Some call me the Jeff Hostower to his Phil Sims. But I know him as the reason why we are all here tonight. He is not only the co-creator, the driving force behind the movie Trivia Schmodown, he is the chairman, and he is from New York. Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman, Mr. Christian Harlow! What's up, New York? Woo You're the best. So good. It's funny. No matter. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. You know, no matter what, no matter how many times, no matter how many times Mark tells me, okay, when we go out, you know, you're going to find the yellow mic. I, I said to him when I hugged him, I, was, I said a nice thing. I go, which mic? <laughs> Still, have, to this day, I have no idea what I'm doing. He's, he's nothing if not a professional, folks. Nothing at all. He forgot no. his glasses and his pants. <laughs> That's right. I, uh, I definitely forgot my pants. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming back to the movie Trivia Shmona. It's season seven. It's the new era. Yeah! I'm so excited. I really am. Look, there's so much great stuff. And so many, look, uh, already, the people that I met, and I was talking to somebody backstage about this, What's so cool about this community, and what's so cool about you guys in general is that I know so many of you already, and the people that have come here, and talking to people last night, and you guys are saying, you know, I come here, I had a really great comment last night, someone said, you know, I, I, I didn't really feel accepted in what I was doing, and then I found this community, and I found this place, and I found this game, and I found all these friends, and like this thing has built and built and built, and we're building it every day, and if you didn't watch last night, the new era just got a lot stronger. Because if you're familiar with The Walking Dead, if you're familiar with all of the, with the great content of The Walking Dead, the comics, the games, the show, well, the company, Skybound, official partner of the movie Trivia Show. That's right. That's right. That's right. We're really excited about it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's nice. You, uh, you get a You Deserve It chant. They, they chanted vegetables at me. So <laughs> I think see where like, we stand. Like, there's, so there's so much that, and I'll be on Tuesday on SCN Live, I'll go more into detail with, it, with you guys. Um, but the, the, the season and the league, it's just going to increase so much more already because all the teams we have now, the managers, the factions, it's going to get great. And what a card to start out the season with because if you look at the first match, you have... The captain, Robert Meyer Burnett. Wow. 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 I, I, don't, I don't think they like him. You, uh, I don't think you they talk like about him. Robert Meyer Burnett must feel like The Walking Dead coming out here to that reception. I think he likes it. I think he likes it. But I don't know if you guys know who he's playing. He's playing a guy by the name of Andrew Guy. Oh, you heard of him. You heard of him. Okay. You heard of him. Okay. Yeah, they know him. 
All right, they know him. Hey, look, I, that's the match I'm terrified of. Me too. Because I had to announce Robert Meyer Burnett versus Tom Dagnino, and I'm never getting that hour of my life back. No. Well, so I hope a little bit more points are scored today. And I was looking at the competitors backstage. They have a different look in their eye. Both Andrew and Robert Meyer Burnett, they know what this means for themselves, what it could mean for the future going forward. They are prepared. They are ready to go. And that's just the first match. That's right. And that's a former manager and his... And Again, Andrew Guy was very upset with his former manager, stepped down for a second, but realized, I'm not stepping down. This guy was all about himself. He was selfish. I'm coming back to take care of him. And the reason why is his old partner, Ben Bateman, gave him the match, and that's what we have here. But Andrew Guy has a lot to lose, but we'll see what happens. It's going to be a very entertaining match, to say the least. And then, the number one contender match, a triple threat here in Brooklyn. That's right. You have teammates, teammates going up against each other. You got Brendan the Kid Meyer. Yep. William, the Beast, Bibiani. And they will be in that triple threat against the three-time movie trivia Schmodown champion, Dangerous, Dan Merle, in the house. It's going to be so a good wait. one. Wait, let me get this straight. So there's going to be a beast, a shark, and we're going to put a child in the middle of that match? <laughs> it looks like it. It looks like it. So, already, man, this is going to be something to really look forward to. I cannot wait. Brooklyn last year was incredible. The energy, I can feel it already. It's going to be something special. And we're starting out with both Guy and Burnett. We're going to show you how they got to be right where we are today in a little video right here. I am the man that gets things done for you. You do seem to have a rejuvenated energy about you, Guy. He is the true champion, and we will be champions. So you know what, Bateman? If you beat me, which will not happen, you can pick whatever my next match is. I don't care. You can put three people on one. You can have me play Merle again. You can have me do whatever you want. You pick. Let's set some shit on fire. a whole show out for Christian and he lets this and this happen to me is he ready mentally is he ready physically so Robert Meyer Burnett yeah. very happy to yeah. greet his stable crew still limping these are the number one contenders in this league they're going all the way My family goes all the way to the finals. Sam wins the tournament. I think that's probably uh, a good a good time to announce my retirement. But I think what's really important is what happens with me. Next year is going to be my year, isn't it? season has been you all you all Robert Meyer Burnett it's time for a change Mr. Andrew Guy now I'm with Sam and Drew McQueenie are you kidding me this is gonna be absolutely out of this world do your worst make it about you again because you know what I'm the captain now Go, Mark. I mean, look, no love lost there between those two for sure. And there's so much 
there's so much animosity. You could feel it backstage. You could feel it, it, it just for people walking in. It is there's so much going down with this match. Yeah, it's... Robert Meyer Burnett. Yeah, uh, training for the match. Did not drink at all this week. That's true. He told me. I have That's that true. honor. And, and I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I don't know. Andrew Guy might be the only person who goes on vacation and takes an office chair with him. It's very confusing. That's yeah, the truth. Well, you know, the other thing uh, that they saw in the beginning that Sam Levine drafted Andrew Guy. Now, Sam Levine and Andrew Guy had a conversation before this. This match was set up way before the draft and everything, too. They had a mutual uh, understanding. Guy told Levine, I'm good. I want to do this on my own. I want to go in there and face him on his own. And Burnett, we thought, was going to do that. But Burnett is actually entering with someone tonight. And we'll, we'll show really? you guys who that is. When, when do we know who they are? Uh, I, I, know I know who it is, but I'm waiting for the crowd to see. And we'll explain a little bit more once that person walks in. But oh, it's like a reveal. I believe so. Wow. Uh, you, you put glasses on this guy, and he knows a thing I know. or two. I know a thing I think or they two. look nice. Uh, thank you so much. I think I they look nice. That. I'll see, we'll but talk about it at home. The question, though, is that we know that Andrew Guy in the past has been an emotional player. We know that when he has had nothing to lose, he shows up. He beat Dan Merle, he beat Mark Riley, and then when the stakes got on him and it started to, you know, really push on him against John Roca, he didn't get it done, and then against Ben Bateman, it didn't happen. You think the spotlight hurts him? You think he chokes under the gun, under I, the pressure not, of the moment? I just think that sometimes if he lets emotion get to him, because if, with, against Roca, the emotion was high. Against uh, uh, Bateman, clearly it was, the emotion was high. So what is he going to do here against his former manager? We'll have to find Less out. emotion, right. more gamesmanship, more stepping up in the big moment. Basically, you think Andrew Guy needs to turn into a legend named Eli Manning tonight. Oh, that, was for you. Oh. that was for some I like of you. Doing I personally hate the ball club, but that was for you, New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so we're going to see because this is – Guy has everything to lose. Burnett has nothing to lose. Burnett took the 10th spot in his faction tonight, because, so he was in order to play. But – that was last match against Dagnino was a disaster. It was, it was, uh, to, to, say, to say it was awful is an insult to everything else I've ever called awful. <laughs> That's true. It was bad. Robert yeah. Bernard, maybe he's just here for free pizza, but you know when he gets on that stage, he's a showman. He likes performing, and he likes doing a little bit of competing as well. Well, are you ready, my friend? I'm prepared, ready to go. The beard is good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the movie trivia! That's right, three rounds in the singles division. Introducing first. Representing the Burning Trues. Led to the ring by the golden boy, James White. He is one win, one loss. The captain, Robert Meyer Burnett. Burnett, hugging people that don't want to be hugged. <laughs> Look at him right up on stage. Oh that oh definitely boy. felt like, look at him, wow. he made it up anyway. If you cannot recognize excellence, awesomeness, if you do not understand what the burning groups represent, you're all wrong. You're wrong, you're wrong. Let me explain something to you all now. Ah, uh, action, army. You know, after Guy's performance in the family this year, it's in action, oh, army. Oh, man. That's not going to get the fans happy, I'll tell you that. Andrew Guy is a choker, not a clutch player. My genius led to the nuke that brought you all of here and us together. Andrew Guy, I gave him every match. I promised Drew McWeeny a championship, and you know why he didn't get it? Andrew Guy choked, choked, choked. As a matter of fact, my genius even led to the deal they announced with Skybound. You know who got that in? Me. I met with the executives. They knew, they knew my genius was not limited to this jacket. 
I drafted the golden boy, the greatest rookie this game has ever seen. Or will see, you'll see when he plays. But before that, Andrew Guy, I don't know why you all follow him. I don't know what you think, Mr. Action. When has he ever won without being carried by somebody else? When? You know what? The proof will be in the pudding, gentlemen. And I will just allow my action to speak louder than his inaction. Wow, Robert Meyer Burnett going after his old, his, his old student, if you will, and, yeah. and Andrew Guy. And there's James White, who, James White was chosen in the second round. No one who knew who James White was, and now they know who he is, and he's there front and center with Burnett. That's right, that's, uh, that's strong words from Robert Meyer Burnett, and I guess thank you for the Skybound deal? Yeah. I, didn't, I, I, I didn't know. Is that news to you? He must have been in the room when I wasn't there. And his opponent! Representing the usual suspects with a record of two wins, two defeats, and two knockouts. He is Dastardly Drew Guy! Look at the ovation for Drew. Look at the ovation for Drew. They love him. They love him. They love him. They love him. baby 2020 I am so excited to show you the new Drew the usual suspects and an embarrassment of a dinosaur of a fossil this man was the IG champion before Brendan Meyer was even born all right he is a joke when I was at my lowest my real lowest I quit I walked away I walked away from you and I apologize. But you know what happened? He made it about him. Unscripted, unabashed, that was real. He does not care about me. He does not care about you. Choker. I won a belt once, you have not. Hey. You won a belt once, that's cute, that's real cute. Why are you talking? I didn't talk during yours. Have some respect for the game. This buffoon didn't even look at the wheel before he got on stage. He doesn't study, he doesn't care. He only cares about himself. And you know what? I'm gonna embarrass him right now for you, for them, and for Skybound, baby! Let's go! Look at that. Andrew Guy coming in with a fire. Doesn't even look, doesn't even look at him. And we are heated exactly what we thought. The crowd is hype, yeah. Mark. And uh, it, it, just for the record, I'm not comfortable with either gentleman negotiating with Skybound. No, uh, from here on no, not at all. So we'll, we'll handle that. Yes. Thank all you. right, ladies and gentlemen. Check your DM box, Skybound. Oh, all right, so oh, we've boy. got Andrew Guy on the table. we got Burnett on the table. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get the rules for let's round number one. Let's see if I remember the rules, right, huh? Let's see if you get it. In round number one, the field of competitors will hear eight questions. These come in eight different categories of movie, trivia, schmodown, know-how. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing. In round at number one, as soon as we ask the question, you have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote to the crowd, to us, and then verbalize <laughs> your attempt into the microphone. 
You also each have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want us to repeat it, you just want to buy yourself another 15 seconds for dramatic purposes, use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three-round match. All right, so we then, we start with Andrew Guy. Nobody ever cheers the rules, you know? No. Nobody ever, nobody ever cheers order. Yeah, it's kind of a cheap pop you got there. They like chaos. Yeah. All right, we start with Andrew Guy. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Robert Meyer Burnett, are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's get ready to schmodown! Here we go. Round number one, question number one. In the realm of action adventure, who was the headlining star in the 90s action films The Specialist and Assassins? And we do ask the crowd to please remain silent during the yes. uh, answering portion. Thank you. So. Thank you, stranger, who I may be related to someday in the future. Are you, are you asking for just one name? Yes. Just one name. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. We start with Andrew Guy. Sylvester Stallone? Yes. Robert Meyer Burnett? Sly Stallone. Yes. Okay. Tie it up. One, one. All right. We move on to famous actors and actresses. And your question, which actor has played such characters as Lieutenant Daniel Caffey, Ethan Hunt, and Frank T.J. Mackey. So far, so I am uh, two for two so far. Oh, if you're keeping score at home. Good for you. Yeah, got this one right. Did you come out of retirement? I uh, have the answers in front of me. Oh, five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Robert Meyer Burnett. Tom Cruise. Yes, sir. Andrew. T.C. Legend, baby. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. It is. All right. <laughs> Question three. Question three. All right, here we go. Who played Chucky Sullivan, Will's best friend, and Goodwill Hunting? From the category Chucky of Sullivan. dramas. What's it? Dramas. Dramas. It's a Categories dramatic of dramas. Film. Does Andrew Guy really call Tom Cruise TC? I guess so. <laughs> They're close. He follows one of my followers on Twitter. <laughs> so. Five, four, three, two, one. Andrew. Ben Affleck. Yes. And Robert Meyer Burnett. Ben Affleck. Yes. 3-3. Three, three. Your next question is in the world of animated movies. These are movies drawn by hand or on a computer. Your question, what Disney animated film is known for the song lyric, A Tale As Old As Time? Wow. It's, round, it's the first season in round one. Wow. Get lost. I think the crowd's just upset because they really want to sing yeah. and they have to wait Five, for 10 seconds. Four, three, two, one, and we start with Andrew Guy. Oh, Beauty sorry, and the Beast. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. That's right. That's right. And it's fine. That's right. Robert? Beauty and the Beast. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Words as old <laughs> as rhyme. All right, here we go. Next question. No? No. Five. This is the fifth question. Fantasy sci fi. Who played John Connor? in Terminator Salvation. I know why they gave you that question. Why? Because you do an impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Stop it. <laughs> Five, <laughs> four, <laughs> five, three, It's two, an aggressive count you got there. One, Robert, what do, you, what do you got? Christian Bale. Yes, and Guy. <clears throat> Christian Bale. Tie game. <laughs> Your next category is in the world of comedies. Yes, it stayed. It, it, it's it, a new era, but we still get laughs. It, but it could have stopped last season. I gave you an Arnold impression. That's you give fair, me that's this. fair. Right. Who directed the film Elf? You see how my questions are really tight and easy to, you know, simple. I get to the point. I'm very proud of you. You know, you and your impressions and your robot. Yeah. Five. Schwong, Schwong, four, Schwong, Schwong. Three. Repeat the question. That was from Andrew, okay. Who directed Elf? All right, I'm good. Did you just throw a cap at me? Sir? I did. <laughs> <laughs> the dastard isn't completely gone yet. <laughs> and five, four, three, Don't you two, throw that cap at me, Mark. One, we start with, uh, with Andrew Guy in this one. John Favreau? Yes. And John Favreau. Yes. There we go. Tie game still. 
Tie game after, was after? Wake up, let's go! It's a perfect game right now, come on! All right, here we go. Here's the next one. This is horror slash thriller. Who starred as lawyer and adulterer, Dan Gallagher, in the film Fatal Attraction? I love the way that question's phrased, like it's on his business card. <laughs> I am a lawyer and an adulterer. And an adulterer. I do adultering on the side. Don't leave the door open. Five. Makes sense if you think Too about far. it. Three. Too far. Too far. Sorry. Two. Family program. Hey, will you shut your ass? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens uh, down. No swearing, Christian. You're right. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> Pens down. Pens down. And you really are baby face now, huh? And Robert Meyer Burnett. Michael Douglas. Yes, and Andrew Guy. Oh, yeah, baby, Michael <laughs> Douglas. He got Let's it. Let's go. Tie game. 7-7. Seven, 7-7. Seven. Seven, seven. Look at that. So, strangely enough, we are in a position where both competitors are almost going to get a perfect round. Perfect round. So if they get this correct, they have a perfect round and they have a chance for a bonus question, Mark. It is a Patreon question. Thank you to all of our patrons in the movie trivia showdown. Uh, this question comes to us courtesy of Jeremy Hastings. How about a hand for Jeremy? Jeremy Hastings. And he wanted a question in the category of 80s movies, 1980s films. Andrew, I lived through that decade. Just being <laughs> Thank you very much. And your question. What two classic cartoon characters famously take part in a dueling piano duet in 1988's Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Ooh. I like that query. It's a great a lot. question. It's a good question. I like it. Make them work for it. Make them work for yeah, it. Yeah, perfect round. Who would have thunk it? All right. Well, that's what we're going to find out in a second here. As we get down to five, four, three, two, one pens down. We start with Andrew Guy. Tom and Jerry. And Robert Meyer Burnett. Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. The answer was so Daffy close. Duck and Donald Duck. So both got it incorrect. Two ducks. Seven, seven, we stay. No perfect round. But now we enter round number two, and it's all tied up. Seven, seven. The this captain and dastardly Drew Guy. It's round two, Mark. Pretty crazy. I think Robert Meyer Burnett plays better when Finstock is 3,000 miles away. That's true. Uh, gentlemen, in round number two, this is affectionately known as the wheel round. And how about a hand for the wheel provider, Ben Goddard, in the house? All right. We uh, thought about doing the electronic wheel. Oh, boy. He loves that. Hey. Got a lot of love. Bagelbo's got Good a lot of love. Famous, I guess. Each competitor gets a spin at that there wheel. If you don't like the first category you spin, you are awarded a mulligan, which is golf for do-over, unless you spin opponent's choice. Now, each wedge is going to have four questions. Each question's worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. So we have Drew and Robert Meyer Burnett Christian. They're tied inexplicably at seven points apiece. Inexplicably? Andrew Guy has the right to either spin or you may defer to your opponent. You should defer to me. I like playing from behind. <laughs> that means move, Colonel. I believe he deferred his spin to you, Robert. Well, here's the spin from Robert Mybernak. Big spin there. There it is. All right. So again, he, again, unless it lands on opponent's choice. Yeah. Is the Meryl Streep on there? What do you got? Nolan. Christopher Nolan movies. Christopher Nolan movies for the captain if he wants it. He's thinking about it. What's he going to do? He's a director himself. Maybe he knows a He does. He knows, the he knows Nolan. I'll take it. He's going to take it. He's going to take Nolan movies. All right, I'll ask, I'll ask the questions for Nolan here. Yeesh. For Christopher Nolan. He's going to have four questions in the realm of Christopher Nolan. Film. I know it's been a long time, Robert, but you don't actually need to write down your answers in round two. <laughs> you can go. set that whiteboard down and stop making a fool of yourself. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. All right, see, Respect wow. the game. Wow, Burnett speech us there. All right, Burnett, here you go. Four I didn't write anything. Four questions. All right, here's your first one. Here's your... Here's your first one. All right, all right. Wally Pfister won his Best Cinematography Academy Award for which Christopher Nolan film? The Five. Dark Knight. It's incorrect for the two-point steal, Drew. Dunkirk? Looking for Inception. Inception. That was gonna, I was going to say that. Damn it. That's all right. Here we go. All right, here's question, question two. In Dunkirk, what is the name of the sailing vessel captained by Mark Rylance's character? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no answer. Go to multiple no. choice! Why you help? I'll at least help you with that. I, I wouldn't know. Okay, multiple right. choice. Well, I can't, unfortunately, yeah, you said I, I don't know. So you said I don't know. So Drew, you could, you could, I don't know he what said, it is. I don't, know I don't even know what it would be if multiple right, so choice. Drew, for the two point steal. I really needed you to go to multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. All right. Uh, the, you know what? I've always liked this name, and this isn't what it is because it's in Pirates of the Care. No, I can't do that. I can't just say the wrong answer. Five. Uh, the, four. Three. The Maid Marian. <laughs> Looking for the Moonstone. The Moonstone. All right, here's your next. <laughs> Question three. Question three. All right. Who plays Dr. Mann, who is the brilliant scientist who was one of the original astronauts sent through the wormhole in Interstellar? Matthew McConaughey? It's incorrect for two points, Steele. Anne Hathaway? From Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Oh, yeah. Wow. All right. Hey, at least Robert Mark Burnett gave an answer that time. That's true. He's All improving. Right. So here is, here is the fourth and final question here in Nolan. Finish this quote from The Dark Knight Rises. You don't fear death. You welcome it. Your punishment must be more blank. Multiple choice. Is it A, creative, B, brutal, C, interesting, D, severe. D, severe. For one point. Congratulations. One point. All right. So Robert Meyer Burnett scores a whopping one point in round two. And now we move on to Andrew Guy, who's going to go for a spin. Now, if Andrew Guy can get something, if Andrew Guy gets something that he wants, he could really put him out of his misery here. What was that? Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick. Respin. Respin. Respinning on Kubrick. Repinning on. There we go. There it is. There's the spin. It's a better spin. Is it a better result? And landing on the blue. Yeah. Spin again. <laughs> and here's the third spin. You got to celebrate the wins in life. Yeah. You know? Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell movies. It is. All right. All right. Four questions. In the world of Kurt Russell, or as I call him, KR Legend. Andrew, your first of four questions. For two points, which sports film finds Kurt Russell coaching the 1980 United States men's hockey team? Gentlemen, uh, that'd be Miracle. By two points. Brian Your next question for two more points. Which actress plays Kurt Russell's wife in the 1992 thriller Unlawful Entry? I love this movie. I just watched it. Is that a family film? <laughs> uh, multiple choice. Is it A, Andy McDowell, B, Demi Moore, C, Melanie Griffith, or D, Madeline Stowe? Madeline Stowe. Ken Napsok's favorite actress of all time. It is Madeline Stowe. For one point. All right, your next question for two more points, Andrew. In which Kurt Russell film will you find the quote, give my regards to King Tut? 
3,000 miles to Graceland. That is incorrect for a two-point steal and much-needed points. Robert. <laughs> Repeat the question. I can do that for a JTE rule. In which Kurt Russell Gosh. film will you find the quote, give my regards to King Tut? Stargate. That's a big steal for Robert Meyer Burnett. Two points. All right, last question. Your last question, Andrew. In the world of Kurt Russell, the greatest actor of all time. Kurt Russell first appeared in which Fast and Furious movie? Need the actual title of the film. Great franchise. It is. Yeah. And Furious five. 7? That's a big get for Andrew. Two points Guys, for two Andrew. Points. What's the score? All right. 12 to 10, Andrew Guy. All right. 12 to 10. All right. All right. So we have now the third and final round here in this match. Mark, tell me the rules. <laughs> yes, the note to the crowd. Andrew Guy did not just win the match. Um, <laughs> But he could if he gets his points right in this next round, because in round number three, each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers can range from one to 20. We need three numbers from each of you. Andrew's going to give us his numbers first, then Robert Meyer Burnett has to pick different numbers. Each number corresponds to a different category of movie, trivia, schmodown, knowledge. The first question you hear is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your last one is worth five. There is no stealing in round number three. Christian, Andrew Guy is going to give us his numbers that he feels are lucky punk. Four, seven, and 11. Four, seven, and 11 for Guy. All right, Burnett. Thank you. Thank you. Two, six, and 13. Two, six. Two, six, and 13 for Burnett. All right, Burnett is going to go first here and try to tie the game here. He's going to try to tie. The crowd hates math. What is it? What time is it? What is it? 13, 10? Uh, 12, I thought it was 12, 13, 10. Okay, 13, so. 13, 13, 10. Thank you. I thought it was 12, 10. So I can't see that side of the board. Uh, all right, so then he needs to hit this too. It is dramas. It is dramas. All right, here you go. Robert, who stars as Benjamin? He's a widower looking to start over with his kids in a Cameron Crowe film called We Bought a Zoo. Matt Damon. For two points. Yeah. Matt Damon making his presence known in this match. <laughs> he missed Matt Damon the first time. He was determined you like not to now? let that happen again. He did. Well, now, now he needs to hit from category, category number six. Three-pointer here. It's a good one for him. Yeah, here we go. Fantasy sci-fi, Robert. Here we go. Jump. What, what time is it? You just told me it's 13. See, I was right. Who's lying to me? So well, I, was, I was joking because I thought, yeah, I was trying to get another it's free 12, point. 12. I apologize. I can't see the board. I was, you know, Even with the glasses, I, did, I, I can't I thought see you knew. the board. I thought you had someone right. in your ear. So then it, it goes back to Andrew Guy then with the two points. Right. So right. Does that mean I don't... Shut up down there! <laughs> go ahead. Andrew Guy. We here at the movie trivia show now do not encourage drinking before a production of a live show. Uh, Andrew, you're, <laughs> it's, it's, your category is comedy. Um, <laughs> oh, it is? Oh, and he, your question. He took four for his first. Oh, never mind. You took four. <laughs> God! Challenge! <laughs> but it's still a very likable category. All right. It's WS legend Will Smith. <laughs> and your question. For two points in the wild, wonderful world of Will Smith, who directed Will Smith in the film Ali? Five, four, three, two. Antoine Fuqua. Looking for Michael Mann. Michael Mann. Michael All right. so, Mann. So we are going to bounce now to Robert Meyer Burnett, who has category six, category six, which is fantasy sci-fi. Here we go. Robert. All right, Robert, here we go. In the film Upgrade, who plays the lead? Gray Trace who is implanted with the STEM technology. Five. Tom Hardy? 
Looking for Logan Marshall Green. Logan Marshall Green. So That's now we bounce one. to Andrew yeah. Guy. Andrew Guy. Yeah, here we go. All right, Andrew. This could really help solidify I your chances. I just bought that Blu-ray, too. And getting a W. Uh, you select the Category 7, and you get another well-abbed actor, and that is Brad Pitt. And your question, in the world of Brad Pitt, who played Robert Ford in The Assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford? Casey Affleck. Three points. All right. So Guy has just put himself in the position to win the game. Now, Burnett, Burnett has to hit his five-pointer. If he hits it, he goes, it goes back to Guy. But if he misses, Andrew Guy wins the match. All right, here we go. You know, I got to say really quick, you ruined my 2019 season, but good luck, man. All right, here we go. So hey, Thanks, buddy. We have <laughs> horror. Nice. Horror. Horror is the category. Horror is the category. Here we go. Tony Amendola plays a disillusioned priest by the name of Father Perez in Annabelle and what other Conjuring Universe film? Fine. Repeat the question. Second one. Tony Amendola plays a, a disillusioned priest by the name of Father Perez in Annabelle and what other Conjuring Universe film? He's got one more JT rule. He does. He wants to use it. Five. The Nun. And your winner! <laughs> Dastardly Drew Guy! The answer was the, cur the curse of La Llorona. Curse of La Llorona. Curse of La Llorona. And Andrew Guy, it, was, it wasn't the prettiest of victories, but it's a victory. It certainly was not, Christian. Andrew Guy sharing a nice hug with Robert Meyer for Guy takes it. That's nice to see. A good sign of sportsmanship there. Looks like. All right, Andrew, there you go. Andrew Guy starts off the season. He wins the match. Sometimes I surprise even myself. Listen, I was shocked that you said yes to Nolan because there's so many questions that can come up with that. What were your thoughts afterwards? You know, I knew Inception, and I, I second guess. One of the things you do up here, you second guess yourself, and you shouldn't, because it's usually your first answer is the right one. Now, look, you know, the, this whole animosity with Guy, is it over now? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, look, you got to respect your opponent. Because it's a game. But when you're, off, when you're off stage, when you know what he's like in real life, which is a choker, you know, you can't. I gave him, I gave him, I gave him everything he wanted. I gave him everything he wanted. My Machiavellian genius led the family to a place that we should have become victorious, but he couldn't handle the pressure. You've got a lot going on in 2020 now. There's a whole new team. You're managing. Are you going to stay on the roster or are you just focused on your own team? Yeah, we'll see after this performance tonight, which was better than I thought, maybe. But what I got here is my golden boy, James Paul White. This, this, 
This is what the burning droogs are all about. Somebody you don't see coming that will burn the game down. And that's what this golden boy has to offer. Yeah. Seems like there's a lot of faith in him. Where does that come from? Greatness. <laughs> Excellence. You know, you know, they used to call him the gator, but that means he like lives in Florida. Being a golden boy means he's going to own the planet. Golden boy, the, the, those, are some, those are some strong words. Any thoughts? Look. Everybody thought that Andrew Guy was going to come out here and wipe the floor with Robert Meyer Burnett. And did that happen? Absolutely not, because we are a great team. I sat in the green room, and I made sure that he was ready for this match. And look what happened. He came within one question of beating Andrew Guy here. And you know what? I am ready for this. I am ready for this league. I know that I've got his support. And we're going we're gonna to do some, uh, some crazy things here. My last question for you. Since you know the whole mastermind scheme, Bateman set this up. So what do you think? Do you think he was giving, do you think he was giving Guy a kind of gift or a curse? I think he was testing Andrew. I think Bateman is almost as Machiavellian and almost the kind of genius that I am. And, um, and I think Ben Bateman is a surprise. You never know what he's going to do. And I think, you know, maybe he made the right choice, but I did show people that I'm better than you thought I was going to be. And I think that was what I wanted to do for the burning droogs. Lots of confidence going into 2020. Confident even in defeat. Thank you so much. Well, there you go. Thank you, Phoenix, on that one. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Guy will hear from in a second. But, uh, yeah, there he, Burnett, you yeah, know, he did. He came out, he played, he, he did his thing, and he's got, he's, I think it was really also to showcase James. Doesn't Wyden. look like that jacket's going away anytime soon. <laughs> All right, now. Andrew, come on up here. I got to talk to you as well. heel but look at the love that you have tonight action on me yeah. represent I, I have to say this matchup it was nail biting at times were you surprised that he went so far with you <laughs> that is the best that Robert Meyer Burnett has done at anything in his whole life <laughs> that was the golden moment of his existence honestly I gotta say I gotta say I am shocked and slightly appalled that he did that well. But thanks for making me look that much better. There was a little criticism about you saying that when it came to those hard moments that you kind of clammed up a little bit. But it didn't seem like that tonight. You were super confident. You looked under control, except for that one Kurt Russell question. But you were under control pretty much the whole night. What was the philosophy going in? So the dastard has been the greatest entertainer you all have ever seen. And I, and I know that. I know that. But you know what? I've come so close so many times and I haven't quite gotten there. And what did I talk about tonight? I talked about respecting the game. Now, you remember some idiot that talked about this at the beginning of last year and his name is Ben Bateman. Now, do I respect Ben Bateman? No. Do I forgive Ben Bateman for being a traitor? Never. But he changed his tune and he won a belt. I'm with the greatest faction in the Schmodown now. And I'm going to win a belt this year. And right now is the moment that shows you guys it's all about respecting the game. And that's what I did tonight. See, this is a beautiful way to go into the next matchup with corruption. Give us your thoughts on that coming up. Chance and his teammate have ridden my coattails for two years. Just like RMB, the only reason that anyone even talks about Chance's teammate is because of me. That is it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make him cry just like he always cries when he loses. And maybe he'll go back to being a face. I don't know. I'm really excited to find out what he's going to do. And he'll probably apologize for it along the way. Well, I guess it's really easy to say that you're happy that you came out of retirement right now. I came out of retirement for you. Yeah. And I came out of retirement for her. And I'm going to leave you on this. Say goodbye to the dastard and say hello to Debonair. Thank you, guys.
guys. Wow, thank you, Phoenix. Awesome, awesome. Debonair, Drew Guy, I like the sound of it. I, I like, like that. How about a hand for Phoenix, ladies and gentlemen? Phoenix Carnavale. Yeah, thank you, Phoenix. So, Andrew Guy. De so apparently Debonair, Drew Guy, who takes the, the match there, takes the win. He's now 3-2. and two. He's now 3-2, and two, and maybe, you know, he puts himself in the singles run. He does have a number one contender match with both himself and the Godfather against Corruption, which will be happening this season. So he's right back on course to, you know, putting himself in that spotlight. Yeah, and look, I was very doubtful of Robert Meyer Burnett's ability to really do anything other than just drool onto the whiteboard right. after last season. But he played a nice match today, and I think he showed enough to warrant him being in his own faction if he wants to continue to compete or if he wants to step back and manage. But regardless of his performance, Andrew Guy – made his arrival here tonight in a whole new way. It is a new era for him, for the show, and I think we're going to see a lot more of him maybe at live events. Yeah, I couldn't agree more because I remember I remember when they, when both him and Bateman walked out uh, against the Shire Wolves uh, when we were doing a live event in L.A., and they were booed out of the building. To see that turn, to see this crowd screaming and yelling and cheering for him, it, it was a nice turn. It was a nice thing that, that he kind of earned it, that, that he did say, I'm respecting the game now. I want to play, and he played well. You know, he had some st stumbles in that second round, but he hit that big three-pointer and he won the game. Well, you talk about screaming, yelling, and cheering. This crowd's going to be doing a whole lot of that with this next matchup. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We have the number one contender match. Now, how we got here was a little different. We were supposed to have an Inner Geekdom Championship match between the current champion, Kevin the Smasher Smets. That's right. And the number one contender, the former champion, the amazing Mara Kanopic. Now, if you watch the, the awards, there was a circumstance that Marge is not physically right now able to compete. Um, she will be back in action soon. We're hoping between February and March. We're hoping. We're going to keep a, an eye on it to see that match will happen. But because of that, it left a spot here. Now, Dan Merle had made it clear at one point that he just wanted to focus on teams. He's a current team's champion. And that he was going to go in and intergeek him. He said, I'm out of singles. I've won the title three times. When the opportunity arose, because he was... He, in the rankings, he defended the title when he, when he won it last time. He had an opportunity to, to face in a number one contender match. It arose. He said, you know what, I'll do it. And Bibiani was the one to face. And Bibiani goes, well, yeah, I'll do it. But I'm also going to use that number one contender match that I won, and I'm going to give it to my teammate. What a guy. And he did that, and now we have a triple threat match here today. Made this match more entertaining, made New York a lot more fun, and we're about to get it on here in the movie Trivia Schmodown. And we'll show you exactly how we got to where we are right here. Boy, what a five round extravaganza of movie trivia know how we have in this showdown. Who plays astronaut Ed White, Neil Armstrong's friend and neighbor in First Man? Three. I'm not going to drop two. Out. Giovanni Ribisi, I don't know. And your winner! And boo! A statement by Bateman. Knocking out the oh, kid. Oh. He was laying in bed this morning, could barely get up, and he did just that and knocked the kid out. And your winner, Ben I knew today when I woke up, I knew today was my day. I just knew it was. Winners always win in the end, but it's all about who's left standing. And guess what? That's us. It's a good promo to listen to. Yeah. Try to play it. I guess I'm not quite ready to take that next step uh, in singles. The start of the season. You, you Astronaut. All right, here we go again. <laughs> Boy, what a five round extravaganza of movie trivia know how we have in this showdown. Who plays astronaut Ed White, Neil Armstrong's friend and neighbor in First Man? Three. I'm not going to drop two. Out. Giovanni Ribisi, I don't know. And your winner, and new movie trivia showdown champion of the world. What a statement by Bateman. Knocking out the oh, kid. Oh. He was laying in bed this morning, could barely get up, and he did just that and knocked the kid out. And your winner, 
I knew today when I woke up, I knew today was my day. I just knew it was. Winners always win in the end, but it's all about who's left standing. And guess what? That's us. I guess I'm not quite ready to take that next step uh, in singles. The start of the season, you, you had one loss, but by, but by the end of the season, look at you, you've had, you've had like you're having championship matches. What's a better story, to have all the belts going in and nowhere to go but down, or to all of a sudden, now you're the underdogs again and mm, build yeah. yourselves back mm. up? Get ready, because there's no more underdog story anymore. The underdogs are the ones that are coming for you, and they're coming for you every single day. People can say what they want to say, but they'll never be able to take this away from me. I mean, those are three, those are three, Mark, three solid, solid competitors that we're going to see in this triple threat number one contender match. And uh, I mean, look, you look at, so you got Dan Merle, who is a three-time champion. He's the current team's champion. He's defended titles numerous amounts of times. Now, Tom Dagnino, the manager of the Finstock Exchange, cannot be here today. And the way that it works this year, that the faction, if they do not have their manager present, that the manager can choose anyone from the faction to serve as manager. Dagnino chose Ben Bateman. So Ben Bateman, the champion, will be walking out with Dan Merle. Now, Coy Jandrew, is part of the Mouthy Mercs. Obviously, he runs the faction. He will be here with both the kid Brendan Meyer and William Bibiani. Uh, Corey Chandra, noted stand-up comedian, will be walking him out. Right. And, um, right. It's exciting. I mean, what I'm really looking for in this matchup is, is somehow, because William and, and the kid work so well together, and now they're splintered off, it's almost like are we splitting votes with them and forgetting that Dan Merle can also just blow everybody out of the water. It's a great question, though. It's like we've seen them so many times play together, minus like an exhibition game. And that complement they play each other's strengths. Right. So what are they going to do now that they're facing off against each other? Are they going to try to team up? Are they going to try to talk? That. You can't do that. And it's so, illegal. Like, what, what are you going to do? So, and now as you go up against uh, Merle, now Bibiani also has never beaten Merle. Merle beat him in a singles title defense. He beat him in the free-for-all, and he beat him in team. So that's got to be in Bibiani's head. It's probably something that maybe is motivating him here. The kid got blown out in the tournament against the champion, so he really wants to get to that title match. And Dan Merle, who wasn't even looking at the singles title, but what if? What if he gets to Atlanta to play, to ba play Bateman and can become a four-time champion? I mean, that's unheard of in this league, and it's possible if anybody can do it, it's Dan Merle. It's nuts. I got the Spirit Airlines app ready to book one of them a flight to Atlanta. Let's right see tonight. what happens. That's right. And before we do it, just to let everybody know, for everybody watching, I mentioned the free-for-all. Bibiani, we know, he is a legend of the free-for-all. He has stayed from, from number one all the way to the end. He did it the year before. That's right. And the free-for-all, the free-for-all is one of our biggest events, and it happens March 21st, downtown Los Angeles. Tickets are on sale now. So you can get them. It was packed last year, over 650 people last year. We can do it again this year. Get your tickets to schmodownlive.com. All right, so with that, Mark, are you ready? I am, uh, well, I'm going to buy my tickets for that event now. But, but for the match itself? While you do the introductions, I'll handle that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia! Schmodown! Three rounds, the number one contender match. Introducing first. Representing Shazam! to the ring by Corey Shandrew with the record of three wins, two defeats, and two knockouts. He is the 2019 team's winner, Brendan the Kid Meyer. Brendan Meyer making his way to the arena here.
kid wearing Apocalypse Now shirt. That's right. And we also saw we we also saw Koi Jandrew just ran out of here, <laughs> ran as fast as he could. Athletic. Because. Athletic. And his opponent, representing the Mouthy Mercs and Shazam. <laughs> Led to the ring by his manager, Roy Shandrew, with a record of 10 wins, 6 defeats, and 4 knockouts. He is the 2019 Ultimate Showdown Team winner and the former Movie Trivia Showdown Singles Champion of the World, William the Beast, Bibby. Pitts coming in, really enjoying this moment. Look at him. Enjoying the moment, shaking hands. Look at that coat. I like that coat. Look at all like that. I believe that is a tiger or a jaguar. Like it's going to be a jungle cat. Young growling. Beast is taking this in. He's taking it in. And he's making his move. William the Beast, Kimiani, the former champ. And he's in his head. He shakes hands with his faction member, Laura Kanaba. There's the beast, the former champ. What a run Bibiani had last year, though. Look at Three that. for all Strut. performance, tur two tournaments. How we do in New York City? I am honored to be here today and just as excited as this guy right here. I love New York City. Now, for my money, the two best players hard stop any category right here. I am honored, I am flattered, I am enamored. Look at this man's jacket. In his Catterday best, putting in the work. I have many tigers on my jacket. It's true, it's just true. This kid was born after most people in this room and knows more than most people in this room ever will. Absolutely incredible. And yes, we are facing one of the very rare people to beat me in a movie fight. But for me, for my money, it's like the Yankees and the Red Sox. And I know you guys are in New York, but it gets, you know. And I got to say, the Red Sox did end up winning. And I really oh, really turn it. It's going to heal? Wow. It's like it's going heal. Ra know your audience. Know gotta, your audience. You got to read the room, Christian. Yeah. I, had, I had to say it here. I had to say it here. But, guys, what are the mouthy mercs without bringing up a little bit of sass? Now, these two right here, they walk the walk. They talk the talk. They know their stuff. And we are here as a faction. We've also got the incredible Mara Kanopic who is here repping the Mouthy Mercs as well. I have never seen anyone like these players in any sport. What this man can do by standing for six hours and what this kid can do by standing for five hours, I cannot wait to see this today. I'm so excited to be here and I cannot wait to see these guys somehow both win. I think they're both gonna win, it's gonna be great. <laughs> All right, so Koi Jandrew, Koi Jandrew. Taking, making, and making a play for his players. All right. And their opponent. of 12 wins, five defeats, and eight knockouts. He is the reigning Movie Trivia Schmodown team champion and the three-time Movie Trivia Schmodown champion of the world. He is dangerous, Dan Morrow! Led to the ring by the champ, Ben Bateman, and also Vince Sockett. Jackass BC, there's the champ beating the former three times. And they've been on smiles. There he is. And Dan Merle looks ready. Ready. He's ready. He's ready. He's ready.
most kick-ass Jaws music I have ever yeah, that's heard. That's really good. That's what he came into when he faced uh, Ethan Irwin. That's right. It's the way the scoreboard yeah, goes. Yeah. Can we it's, switch you two well, characters no, it's, around? It's oh, the, way it's the, the way it is. Goes. Oh, all right. You all see, right. adults have a thing called money. I know. And well, I'm just, I'm just, you know, what I've seen. We don't have a line. Boom, 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 all right, ladies and awesome. gentlemen, we have. We have all three competitors there. Round number one will start very soon. Mark, how does round one go? Uh, in this round number threat? one. It is a triple threat, Christian. Yes. Thanks for pointing that out. But round number one is going to feel like a normal round number one because the field of competitors will hear eight questions from eight different categories of movie trivia, Schmodown know how. Each question's worth a point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There's no stealing in round number one. You may not rely on your teammates' knowledge for round number one or for any round. You sure? You and sure? I, I promise you, you may not consult with your teammate. Be helpful. In any round. No, they in this not, match. <laughs> you each have three JTE rules. Uh, if you're not sure you heard a question right, you want us to repeat it, buy yourself some time for dramatic purposes, use a JTE rule. Once we ask the question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. You gentlemen have been here before. The crowd's been here before. I think they know how to do this. All right. Well, then I ask, I will start with Dan Merle. Dan, are you ready? Let's do this. The kid, are you ready? I'm ready. Mr. William Bibiani. It's hot up here. It is sweaty up here, and that means I'm ready for a three-way. <laughs> then let's get ready to schmoe down! All right, here we go. Round number one, three rounds. Here we go. The first, first category, action-adventure. Action-adventure. Who was the star in the martial arts action films Fist of Fury and The Way of the Dragon? You a... Uh... I know you like watching the, uh, the MMA and stuff. You a martial artist? Do you I ever am? take a oh. karate? Oh, I, my daughter has taken way more lessons than I have. I'll tell you that. Yeah, she can beat the years. crap out of both Absolutely. of us. Absolutely. And five, four, three, two, one. We start with Dan. Bruce Lee? Yes. The kid? Bruce Lee. Yes. And William? The incomparable Bruce Lee. There we go. All right. That's number one. All right. Your next question, in the world of 90s movies, movies that were released in the 1990s, what music star played a psychotic character named Bishop in the 1992 crime thriller, Juice? It's <laughs> <laughs> not True really story. the right, yelling right answer, so that's, no, it that's fine. Not, that's okay. we'll, we'll allow it. Yeah. And five, four, three, two, one, we start with Brendan. Tupac? Yes. Yeah. And William. William. Oh, uh, Tupac Shakur. Yes. And Dan? Tupac Shakur. There you go. Tie game. All right. All right. Here we go. Next category is dramas, gentlemen. Dramas. Who played Mary Poppins author P.L. Travers in Saving Mr. Banks? Where do you stand on Mary Poppins? Would you hire to babysit your kids? Who would you rather have, her or Chris Parker from Adventures in Babysitting? Oh, Mary Poppins. She's very, very... It's an incorrect answer. Five. Four. Take the kids to Detroit. Three. Two. One. And we start with William. Yes, everyone's favorite film about how a corporation heroically destroyed a woman's <laughs> art, Emma Thompson. That's correct. <laughs> Did you write all that down? Uh, Dan. Uh, what Bibiani said, Emma Thompson. <laughs> and Brendan. Emma Thompson. Look at this. Tie game all the way around. Tie game all the way around. All right, next question, Mark. Next question is in the world of new releases. These are films that have been released fairly soon, uh, back then. Who plays Neil Armstrong? Who plays Neil Armstrong in the film First Man? <laughs> well, Burnett just got this wrong in the locker room. <laughs> Five, <laughs> four... Three, two, one, Dan. Are you going to ask me the whole cast of this movie? <laughs> Ryan Gosling. Correct. You got that one right, though. Uh, Brandon Meyer. For me, uh, Ryan Gosling. Yes, and William. Uh, Ryan Gosling, and I drew a little goose in a bow tie. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Nice. All right. Uh, Robert Meyer Burnett just texted me Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. All right, next one. All right, here we go. This is fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. Who played Army Colonel Jack O'Neill in 1994's Stargate? If you were watching the first match, it helps to study the matches. You gotta look at the last match. Yeah. Right? It helps. 
You got to put them work in. Well, they didn't know that was going to come up, the writers. You know, they didn't know. We could so have changed I turned it, my mother. Yeah. Five, four. They didn't know. Three. It's really our fault. Two. It's all. I blame the reader of the question. One. And we start with uh, Brendan. I hope it's Kurt Russell. <laughs> yes. And William. Kurt Russell says, yes. what the hell? Kurt, yes. Kurt all right. There we go. So it was a good, you're, you're all welcome. You're all welcome. <laughs> Six question coming up. All right, your next question is in the world of animated movies. These are movies drawn by hand or on a computer. Which actress provides the voice of weather girl Sam Sparks in the film Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? Oh, look at the kid. Your, uh, your wife, famous for making delicious uh, meatballs. Oh, I was going to say, you, you answered my wife. It's not the wife. answer is your wife. There's uh, some voiceover on the side. Five. Four. When she's not ironing the three, pants that you forgot to take with you. Two. One, pens down, please, and we start with William. Anna Ferris? Yes. Oh, yes! I got it wrong. I, got it wrong. And, I didn't know it. I no, Dan didn't, didn't have it. it. Yeah, and, and the kid didn't it have it, so only William gets it. Wow. Wow. William Bibiani takes the first point. All right, he takes the first one. That's big. All right, there you go. All right. Is that me? Okay. All right, here we go. Horror Thriller is your seventh horror thriller. Which film in the Scream franchise takes place mainly in Hollywood during the filming of a Stab sequel? Take it easy. How many of these things have there been? Eight? I don't care. Five? Nine? Four? Three? Seventy-two is the answer. Two? One? Pens down. Dan? Scream 3? Yes. And Brendan? Scream 3. Yes, William? Uh, the woefully underrated Scream 3, and I drew a ghost face. Wow. So William Bibiani is still perfect here. So where we stand now, William Bibiani has a chance for a perfect round. If he gets this right, he, he and only he will get a bonus question. Here we go, Mark. Yay, number eight is a Thank Patreon you. question from Andy Schick. How about a big Woo! hand for Andy Schick? Not using his razors anymore, but thank you, Andy. Andy wanted a question in the category of comedies. <laughs> one guy in the back putting a lot of gusto. You hear that? Your last question in round number one in the world of yuck yucks. In Mike and Dave need wedding dates. Name one of the two actresses that play Alice and Tatiana who answer their ad and accompany them to Hawaii. You don't need to oh, specify wait, oh, is this not the, who played oh, what sorry. character. Yeah, no, it's not the bonus. Oh, I thought that was, sorry. I'm good thing I was paying attention. My gosh. What, sorry. Uh, David, about the two Five. Four. Oh, I got it. I got it. Three. Two. One. Pens down, please. And we start with Brandon. Anna Kendrick. Yes. And William. Aubrey Plaza? Yes. And Dan. Aubrey Plaza. Yes. All right. So William gets a perfect round. William Bibiani, once again, in his career, pulls off another perfect round. He's got, I don't know, I gotta ask Frankie, but I'm sure that's yet another one in the record books for William Bibiani. All right, so William, William, this is for you and only you. Thank you. Here's your bonus. You do not have to write this down. You simply have to answer it. Okay, wait, wait, wait. All right, here we go. This iconic actress starred opposite Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart in the classic 1940 film, The Philadelphia Story. Catherine Hepburn. For one more point, William Bibiani. Perfect round all the way through. Nine to seven to seven. He finds himself two points over both Dan Merle and the kid. Yeah, round I mean, two, Mark, how's that go? You know, Bibiani, nine points, it's, that's the headline, but the other two, seven points, they're no slouches either. No, so it's big. Still and anyone's ballgame. We've seen Dan come back from this before, so let's see what happens here. The wheel round is now being initiated. Thanks to Mr. Ben Goddard one more time for Ben bringing the wheel. <laughs> Just never going to run away from that, is it? In round number two. Each competitor gets a spin at the wheel. Once you settle on a category, you're going to hear four questions from said category. Each question's worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. Because this is a triple threat match, the way it works is if you are not being asked the question, keep your whiteboard, 
keep your marker, write down your best attempt at an answer in case the opportunity to steal should arise, then we will ask you by name to reveal your answer at the same time you verbalize it into the microphone, a lot like round number one. Uh, Dan Merle is sitting right there, actually he's standing, but William Bibiani is way down there and he has the lead, nine points. Do you want to spin first, William, or would you like to defer? Thanks for making that weird mark. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, defer to my opponent. All uh, right, so he is going to defer to Dan Merle. But Dan can defer if he would like to. It's like a white elephant party. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to defer to Brendan. Right, so there you go. Brendan Meyer will spin first. All right. And I defer <laughs> <laughs> to Robert Meyer Burnett. All right, so the kid is going to spin first. And here's the spin. As Ken Knapsack says, the spin is in. The spin is in. Round and round it goes, Christian, and it is... Middle, Middle Earth. Earth. Do you want to keep it? You're you want to keep spin that, again? Brendan? You think you should? No. Yeah. All right, spinning away from it. What? Spin again. Spin again. Okay. Let's really test them. This wheel. Spin again. Horror. Horror. Horror movie. All right, here we go. That's good for William. That's good for William. Come on, wheel. That is good for William. So here we go. All horror. Right. Horror movies. All right. All right, Mark, we'll be asking the questions here in horror. All right, Brendan. Four question in the world of horror movies, which I have just been told still give you nightmares. <laughs> I don't even watch them. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just kidding. One day I'm you'll be kidding. old enough. All right, here we go. So the way it works for the steal for you guys, make sure that when the question is being asked, what you write. You, what are you doing? I'm just I just told him that. I just we, want to make sure that the audience knows again. Just you weren't listening to my rules. You never listened rules. to my rules. Isn't and this nice? is, now we have don't to do it in front of the kids. <laughs> I'm just grateful that these guys know it's my first schmodown. Yeah. That's great. Is it the audience's first schmodown, William? Okay, here we go. Uh, I am going to turn this car around. Uh, back to the child with horror. Um, <laughs> Brendan, for two points, yeah. Haley Joel Osment can see dead people in M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense. Ah. Who plays his mother, Lynn Sear, in the film? Tony Collette. Two points. Uh -huh. Right. Oscar for Tony! Yes! Thank you! All right. All right, here's it the next was last one. year. Let's get over it. Um, Brendan, for two more points, what horror film stars Karen Gillan as a woman trying to exonerate her brother who was convicted for murder by proving the crime was caused by a supernatural mirror? Wait, what? <laughs> uh, And five. I I I, I am gonna go multiple choice on this. You know, I just can, I gotta be safe. I can't be. It right. is it A mirrors, B Oculus, C shattered glass, or D the broken. Oculus. One point. Yeah. And that wasn't what I thought it was. So I'm glad I went multiple choice. All right. Here's the uh, third. Your penultimate question in round number two. In 13 Ghosts, F. Murray Abraham's character dies, leaving his home to Arthur, his nephew, and a widower with two children, played by which Galaxy Quest actor? Tony Shalhoub. Yeah. Two points. Three points. Good, good pull by the kid. Good pull by the kid. All right, Brandon. One more question in round number two. Valak is the name of this demon who possesses a little girl in this 2016 horror film. Could you, could you repeat the question? Certainly. Uh, for JTE rule, Valak is the name of this demon who possesses a little girl in this 2016 horror film. Five. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do multiple choice. Four. You can provide that. Is it A, The Conjuring 2, B, Lights Out, C, Blair Witch, or D, The Devil's Dolls? Blair Witch? Incorrect. That is incorrect. Oh, no, so for a one point steal, we're gonna ask Dan. William, have you written your attempt? But give them the multiple also. Hmm. I don't need it. Okay. okay. Yeah, oh, darn. I'm good. Yeah. And your attempt is? Conjuring 2. That is correct, William. It's the Conjuring 2, although I don't think Valak actually possesses her. <laughs> oh. So that might actually I mean, be if a... 
It's not. That might be worth challenging. I don't know. I don't know if my manager wants to challenge that because I think Valak is actually haunting Vera Farmiga, and the little girls are actually uh, being haunted by by the Enfield poltergeist. Wow. How much of a move, smart move that is, Hold I have on, no idea. Hold on, one second. We'd like I mean, a one second well, to confirm that we want to challenge this. Are you, are this. you challenge? Well, no, you can't, you can't look it up. You're not going to challenge right. it. That's not, how, that's not how it works. I think we should challenge it. Challenge it for Brandon. You're going to put challenging in the challenge. Challenging it for Brandon. All right, the challenge is in here by... Coy, can you come here and challenge us? What is the official challenge? Pretty fucking confident. Sorry, Please don't later. curse in front of the children that are here. Thank I you so apologize. much. I apologize. I didn't know it was worth it. What's the official challenge? <laughs> but what is the official challenge? Because Valak the Nun is, is haunting Collusion. Her. They go to the, to the actual... We have PJ Campbell. Yeah, Valak is the Nun, so the Nun wasn't doing that. See, so the Nun was connected to the person in the exorcism at the beginning of the Conjuring 1. At the, in the video presentation, and then it lights up here for me. So, where's PJ at? Yeah, no, the, Valak is the nun, and the nun went from the exorcism that was part of the presentation beginning of The Conjuring 2, and latched itself onto Vera Farmiga. It followed them to England. It was not the actual demon that was possessing the little girl. <laughs> As a result, it is a misleading question. Okay. All right. Did you argue that it was a Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a All right. All right. We're coming. We're coming back. Uh, we're gonna come back. We are coming back. Thanks to everybody who enjoyed that commercial. Um, we have uh, conferred up here, and we are going to rule that William Bibiani is correct in his challenge. The nun Valak did not actually possess the little girl. And so now we have to backtrack, because that was a question that was asked originally to Brendan Meyer. So what we're going to do is ask Brendan another question for his last one in the world of horror movies. So unfortunately for Brendan, he has to go back to the scary movieville one more time. All right. So. All right. All right. I got my holy water. <laughs> You don't need to worry about Valak. That only possesses adults. Um, in the film... Yeah, I keep my challenge. Yes, he does keep... William keeps his challenge. In the film Shaun of the Dead, which actor plays Philip, Shaun's stepfather? You know what? I, I can't... I can't... I, I have to be honest. I got... I did get this question. Oh, for God's sakes. And it I, doesn't I, matter. It doesn't matter. All right, Every, all right, all right. Bill Nye! Thank you. <laughs> We, so let me, no, don't challenge because we made an announcement on the thing that every question that we've used in the past can come back in previous matches. That counts. Just stop they challenging. Made the announcement. That counts. I was trying to be good, but that counts. Here we go. All right. That counts. Authoritative. You can come, you can come on. Well, it's his time. That counts, now, yeah. Ben. You can't. That counts. Come on, man. He's coming up. Come on, man. That counts. Very specifically that counts. Room. No, that counts, what, Ben. What are you ask? What are you coming up for? That counts because you're putting Middle Earth on the wheel. That counts. Come on. They Come on, you're count. putting Middle East Earth on the wheel. That We're counts. Come on. We already announced. Let us have We already announced. We already announced. Earth on the wheel. Let, take dude, dude. We already announced that this whole season would be coming back. So, all right, ladies so, and gentlemen, it gets heated. It gets heated. Welcome to the movie I trivia know, showdown. It. it gets heated. Uh, Brendan Meyer is currently up 14 yeah. to nine to seven. So now, William, it is up to you. Would you like to spin or defer to Dan? I will defer to Dan Merle. Thank you for furthering extending the match, Dan Merle. With his spin. Here we go. Back at it. Spin again. Spin again. All right, Dan. Two spins. Two spins for Dan. Round and round it goes. Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. All right. She is a popular actress. Yeah. You can confer with them. Popular actress. Natalie yeah. Portman. Would no. you take it? Would you keep it? Depends on, I mean, you know, Dan definitely knows. Uh, the question is what else on the wheel, yeah. you know? It's what else. It's like, what else is he aiming for? Like he says, is it, it's, it's slice something here. But you've got to make a decision here in, in five seconds here, Dan. If you're going to keep it or not. Five. Going to keep it? Going to keep we're Natalie keep Portman. It. All right, here we go. So we're going to get right. four questions in Natalie Portman. Here we go. Natalie. Natalie. Right. Natalie. Here we go. Question number one. 
question number one, Dan. Natalie Portman makes an appearance in which Michael Mann film? Heat. Correct for two points. All right. It's your movie. That's right. That's your film. Question two. Natalie Portman plays the warrior Isabel in this 2011 comedy. Your Highness. Yes. For two more points. Right. It's a very funny movie. Yeah. All right. This next question here. Natalie Portman and Oscar Isaac star in this 2018 drama. Say Annihilation. Yes. And the fourth wow. question. Natalie Portman makes a cameo as the president's daughter in which 90s comedy? Mars Attacks. For two more points, wow. Dan Merle. 15 points that on was the board a big now. Move. So you got 15 points here. 15 takes the lead. To 14. To nine. Yeah, so now Dan has a perfect second round. Puts himself in a good spot here because William Bibiani has to spin. So now Bibiani spinning, Dan Merle has a great second round, and now Bibbs takes the spin. <laughs> All right, Bibbs figuring out his strategy for the spin. There it goes. Round and round. Oscars. Oscar, Oscar movies. movies. Yeah, gonna He's going to keep it. I'll take keep it. Oscar. All right. All right, William, I'll be asking you your Oscar questions. You're first of four in this category for two points. Warren Beatty has been nominated in over four different Oscar categories. For which one has he won his only Oscar? Just need the category. Not Best director. Two. That is correct. Well, for the movie Red. Two points. Uh, moving on, William, in the world of Oscars, Jeff Bridges has been nominated for an Academy Award seven times. What film got him his first nomination? His first nomination? Five, four, three, two. Last American Hero. That is incorrect. So for a two-point steal, uh, Brendan and Dan can write down the yeah, attempt, but you may not ask for multiple choice because for, William did not yeah, offer. I got it. Dan? The Last Picture Show? Correct. Ah. The Last Picture Show. So ah. Both go both up go. there on Bibiani there. So it's now 17, 16, 11. It's a big steal. Big steal. Big steal. It's a big steal, but William does have two questions left in the world of Oscars. Uh, William, your penultimate question in this round. Who received Best Director nomination for the classic films A Foreign Affair, Stalag 17, and Witness for the Prosecution? Billy Wilder. Two points. All right. So nice job. William has 17 one more. to 16 to now 13. And your last question, William, in the world of the Oscars. Name this best picture winning film on the synopsis. A young nurse tends to a badly burned plane crash victim. The English patient. There you go. <laughs> nice Flashbacks right, so reveal his involvement in a fateful love affair. That but is correct. at the end of the second round now, now Dan Merle's in charge. 17, 16, 15. Now the managers can confer. Look at this. The managers can confer. This is the magic well, that we Coy, we Coy, you, have. Coy, you got to confer with your guys. You can't, not as a team, but separately. Okay, so 17, 16, 15, as we get to round number three here. This is Intense. what we expected. Yeah. We, maybe we thought we'd get here a little quicker, but we're here, round number three, and it's as close as it could possibly be, yeah. unless it's tied. So only the kid has used the repeat. Only the kid has used the repeat. So now the champ walks off, and now we have Dan Merle, Meyer, and Bibiani. 17, 16, 15. Crazy score here. All right, give me the rules for round number three. The third and final round. In round Great number match. three. Great match so far. The field of competitors is each going to give us a series of numbers. We need three numbers from each competitor. These numbers can range from 1 to 20. You may not pick the same number as one of your competitors. Each number corresponds to a different category of movie, trivia, schmodown, know-how. The first question you hear is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your last one, should we make it that far, is worth five points. As soon as you may not mathematically win the game, you are eliminated. So Dan Merle, because you have a one-point lead over the kid and a two-point lead over William Bibiani, mm -hmm. you may select your numbers first from 1 to 20. Which three ones do you like best? Eight, one, and 16. All Eight, right. one, and 16 for Merle, for the kid. 
Uh, two, nine, and four. Two, nine, and four for the kid and for, the, for William. Uh, seven, three, and 19. Seven, three, and 19 for William. William will go first here with the two-pointer, and that's category number seven for William. I'll get that. For William <laughs> Bibiani. All right. Were you flabbergasted by that? Yes, drop? I was. You like that. I remember that. All right, William, Pixar. Okay. What was Pixar's third theatrically released film that was released in 1999? Toy Story 2. Yes, sir. All right. So he ties Merle. So now Meyer will go. Brendan Meyer will go, Mark, and he chose uh, category number two. He did, and that corresponds to, it's certainly a category your teammates are great at, Oscar movies, Oscar films. And for two points, Brendan, the question, what actor won Best Actor in 19... is the 89 Oscars, but the film came out in 1988 for his role in Rain Man? Oh. <laughs> Dustin Hoffman. That yeah, you're going to... Just give it to him right at the end there. Correct. All right, so now we go to Dan Merle. Now we go to Dan Merle, who... Dan Merle gets category eight... 90s movies, Dan. Mm -hmm. 90s movies. In the film Jurassic Park, who plays the park owner, John Hammond? Sir Richard Attenborough. Yes, sir. Uh, Two more whoa, points. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang right. on. Hang on one second. What? No, no, no. You don't have to Yeah. Uh, I want to challenge this, actually, because he is not Sir Richard Attenborough. Oh, he is Lord oh, Richard come Attenborough. Come on. Okay. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. If you put it in there, it should be accurate. Okay. And that's not accurate. The challenge is in. You are, you the challenge is in. It changes their name. I'm not a heel. I'm just trying to... No, no, but I think all right, all right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have conferred... We're going to let it slide. We're going to let it slide. Never mind. Wait, no, you're ready, you're ready challenge. Do you use I'm not, the challenge? I'm, I'm rejecting the challenge. You can't it's reject fine. it. You put, it's the, fine. you put the challenge in. The challenge is in. Okay. The challenge is Was in. Was he Sir Richard Attenborough? You put the challenge the in. The challenge is in, and it has been overruled. The answer is Richard Attenborough. We accept Sir Richard Attenborough as an answer, and we move on with our lives. So and Sir now, Lord Richard Attenborough so is nine, fine with so that. So 19, 18, 17. 19, 18, 17. And now, Christian, it pinballs back to William Bibiani, who now has to answer his three-point question. Yeah, William needs to hit the three-pointer here. All right, here we go. Here we go. Famous actors and actresses, William. Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. This 1980s action superstar was originally considered for the role of Axel Foley in Beverly Hills Cop. Sylvester Stallone. Yes, for three points. All right, All right. William Bibiani back in the lead. Yeah. And so, we keep seeing, it's like a three-way seesaw. So the 19 Dan has, 19? All right, so. Thank you. 20 to 19 to 18. All and right, now we so go now, on to Brendan, the kid Who's got his three-pointer. All right, Brendan, you selected number nine, which is an odd number. <laughs> And Three it corresponds the question? Is it to the world of romantic comedies. What? What? Which one? Because it's originally considered as conjecture. It's casting news. Okay, do, do you want to initiate that challenge? But the category is famous actors and actors. Is, uh, is Sylvester Stallone ever said that? All right. Okay, all right. Yeah. I understand. Challenge is in. Make sure Sylvester Stallone ever confirmed that. That's right. I got, I got, I got, I got. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and boy, do I like challenges. <laughs> well, um, well. The challenge uh, was originally brought up because it's it, it's casting news. Uh, it maybe it's some sort of conjecture. Um, however, it is the ruling of the judges that it is related to movies in some capacity, and so we will allow the question to be asked Damn. and the points to be awarded. So the challenge is overruled. Damn. All right. All right. So 19, 18, 20, no, Brendan Meyer, Brendan Meyer now, Brendan Meyer has category number nine. Go ahead, Mark. All right. Brendan Meyer. Once again, you selected number nine. I said it was an odd number. We had a good laugh. And then I said romantic comedies is okay. the category. And your question for three points. Which 1995 romantic comedy was written, directed, and stars Billy Crystal and co-stars Deborah Winger?
five, four, three. Uh, repeat the question. I can do that. Second Which one. 1995 rom-com was written, directed, and stars Billy Crystal and co-stars Deborah Winger? Originally, they were going to have Stallone. Uh, forget Paris? Wow. Wow, we got it. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Wow. Yeah. Three points. So Brennan Meyer, Brennan Meyer now forces the three-pointer to Dan Merle. Dan Merle now gets a three-pointer. This is fun, man. Yeah. So many lead changes. This is exactly like a college basketball game in March Madness because there's so many lead changes and there's a timeout every 20 it's seconds. 20, was it 20, 19, 19, 21, 20. So Dan Merle now he hits his three-pointer. Yep. All right, Dan, you chose category one, famous actors and actresses. <laughs> Owen Wilson has been directed by Wes Anderson six times. Name three of them. You have 20 seconds. Name three of them. The Royal Tenenbaums, the Darjeeling Limited, and Bottle Rocket. Correct. Dan Merle now goes up 22, 21, 20. So William Bibiani needs to hit his five-pointer to stay in the game. William Bibiani needs to hit his five-pointer to stay in the game. If he does Thank not, you everybody. if he does not, then he will be eliminated. Thank you. I love you too. All right, here we go, Mark. He Thank chose you. category nineteen. He Everyone's did so do that, nice Chris. tonight. Thank you so he, uh, much. He chose category nineteen. Uh, William, this corresponds to the world of spy movies. Okie dokie. Spy movies. Hmm. Was it Spy Kids? And your question for five points and the lead for now hmm. in the film Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation. What is the name of the international terrorist organization led by Solomon Lane? Ooh. Stay in the game. Five, four, three, two. Can I go with my gut? The syndicate. One. Wow! He got it! Yes! Five points! Wow! Wow! <laughs> Big move. So he puts himself 25 now because Dan has what? How many Dan have? Here we go. 22. Dan has 22. Bibiani, 25. Meyer needs to hit his five. If Meyer hits his five, he will eliminate growl, growl. Bibiani. All right. All right. The kid you chose, kid, you chose a number four. If you hit this, William is eliminated. Oh, if you well, miss, I can't be, if you I miss, have to say it like that. If you miss, <laughs> you are eliminated. Oh, that's so, even worse. Here we go. All right, here Not we go. in our hearts, Brendan. All Never right. in our hearts. All right. Brendan, here we go. Fantasy sci-fi is your category. Okay. Fantasy sci-fi. All right. In the film Blade Runner 2049, who plays Sapper Morton, who's a Nexus 8 monocle replicant that Kay is sent to retire at the beginning of the film? Dave Batista. That is correct. Wow. And with that, wow. William Bibiani has been eliminated. What a performance. Wow, though. great performance by the kid. Knocking out his teammate. And you get eliminated? Are you kidding Crazy. me? Crazy. Crazy. Very nuts. Wow. All right. Brandon! Brandon! Wow. All right. Here we go. Yeah, All right, nice, so nice that's... ovation for William Bibiani. There is uh, still some business at hand, and that would be yeah. Dan Merle now has a five-point question to win the game. That's right. If Dan Merle hits this, he has 27 points, and that means he goes on to play his faction mate for the title. However, if he misses it, <laughs> the kid, Brendan Meyer, will be going to Atlanta to be playing the champion who beat him in the tournament last year. All right, Mark, he chose... Number 16. That's right, and Joe Montana's legendary number corresponds to movie quotes. Oh, God. Movie quotes. The crowd's not a fan of movie <laughs> quotes. No. Let's see if Dan Merle is. Dan, your question for the five points and the win. What 1989 romantic comedy features the line, I gave her my heart, she gave me a pen? He's got it. Say anything. And your winner! Ladies and gentlemen, Dangerous Dan Merle! Dan Merle is the number one contender again, and boy did he have to earn it. The 
calling me pale, frumpy, Jen Sturger. That's fine. <laughs> that could, you guys can call me that. All right, are you guys, how, what about that match? Woo! Was that a number one contender match or was that a number one contender match? First up, I've got to talk to Shazam as a team. Shazam, come on up here. Both Bibiani and Brendan, come on up, come on up. What a match, Give what a, a match hand. for these Give guys. Give him a hand. It really was a hell of a match. Come on up. Amazing. Look at this. Look at the reaction. Bibs. Bibs, I'm coming. I'm coming to you first. All right. Bibs, I am coming to you first. I am hi. How how are you? I'm doing really good. How are you? That's the Yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm having a great weekend. Bibs, you had a challenge. In this, and it actually helped your teammate pass you in round two. And then your teammate knocked you out. Talk to me about what you're feeling right now. Well, he didn't actually knock me out, he just beat me. But that's fine, and I'm actually so proud of you because um, that was a misleading question. And I'm really, really glad that I was able to uh, get him one that, you know, wasn't misleading. Yes. And that's, that's why I got it wrong, because I was misled. Not because I didn't know. <laughs> I named this faction so perfectly, like, this is this mouthy Merc assembly, like, these guys, like, I love how well they work together, like, what an incredible duo, I just, I'm so proud of them, guys. What an, and what an actor, uh, we all know, he's a professional actor, that was, I believe every word of that. So, the other thing I want to ask you, babes, you've lost to Dan Merle, he is, do you feel like he is your kryptonite? You have only lost to him. I've, I've lost to several and, people, actually. And quite, no. quite badly. <laughs> quite badly, I've lost to I'm people. saying when you're playing. <laughs> okay, well. I think, I think, I, I don't know if, see, if it's kryptonite, I think uh, it would only affect one person, but I think, you know, if it just affects everybody, it's just a deadly weapon. <laughs> and so you are considering Dan Merle a deadly weapon in the Schmodown. Yeah, no, I think, I think actually he needs to be registered with the government and only used <laughs> in self-defense. I don't think this is actually fair to just unleash him onto people like, you know, good-natured, nice human beings like, like the, the folks of us here in the Murthy Mouse. Look at this face. He's so nice. How could you dare borrow this? Well, you heard it here first. Viviani has created the verb to Dan Merle something. All right, we're going to the kid. Brendan, how are you feeling right now? You had an awesome, awesome match. Tell me, tell me how you're feeling. I mean, it's a whole 20 points more than the last time I played singles. So I feel, I feel pretty good. 
You know what? I'm of two minds about it. I, I learned a very valuable lesson today. Uh, I had written Tina Fey on the cloudy with a chance of meatballs thing, and it's just the first thing that came into my head. And you know, it's funny because like I didn't. I, it's not like something I should have known, but I, I could have tried harder to picture that IMDb. So that's, I gotta make sure I just a little harder on myself when I'm up here as far as thinking through things. Uh, if I have some doubt, that being said, uh, you know, my partner was good enough to challenge and then I got a question that I already got and got wrong last time. So, uh, so, 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 uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's all a roller coaster. Uh, and um, so, but you know what, I'm very happy uh, to have put up that score and uh, I, it was so fun to get to be a part of this match. And look, I, I think I actually have way more self-belief uh, than ever before. Uh, As you should. I, I, uh, I, uh, you know, you're, we're playing the best in the league now and there's no guarantee that you'll ever be able to win these matches. You know what I mean? Because you're up against the very, very best. Um, but man, I'm not, I, I'll be honest, part of me wasn't sure I'd ever score 26 points in the Schmodown. So knowing that there's a possibility for that. Uh, Jan January 25th, baby, you did it. You did it today. Coy, talk to me about what you feel like this means for the combination of these two this upcoming season. I mean, between them, this, was, this couldn't have been closer. Like, this was a beautiful thing separately. So the, I've never been more confident with them together because if they can do this on their own, the way they work even separately as a team, like they were playing, like, it was, it was, like, I mean, look at this. It was so hard to confer with them separately and I had to, but I was like, they're my boys. So I just, I love how well they either win or learn. It's, it's a win or learn game. And this was every example of that. And I was so impressed throughout. And I, I got like three. So frankly, I was just like, I was just, these guys are incredible. Can I say one thing? I just want to say, because... <laughs> it helps me, because otherwise I don't have it up here. Uh, I, I just want to say one thing, because I've made a joke of it because it's fun too, but I, I do really want to thank Bibbs for making that challenge. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, I, I re that was a really great sign of sportsmanship, and uh, I, I'm really happy that you supported me in that way, and thank you very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Shazam and the Mouthy Marks. What a show! It really was. Thank you really so was. much, guys. That's got to be the best triple threat we've ever seen. Well, it's, it's the best triple threat. It speaks to Brendan. Are, you guys, you, know. are you guys ready to get Dan Merled? Here he is, your number one contender, Dan Followed, Followed by some guy I don't know. Followed by some guy I don't know. All right, I've got something for you. Michael Jordan. Abraham Lincoln, Dan Merle. Dan, you have won the singles belt three times. You are heading to Atlanta on February 1st. To, to, 20, 20, February, February yesterday. Sometime in February. Check the website. February to compete against your faction, mate. How are you feeling for your fourth belt? How are you feeling? I mean, I love New York. What, what else can I say? <laughs> yeah. You, last year, on this very stage, defeated Ethan Irwin. What does it mean to you to come back to the stage and to Dan Merle somebody else? <laughs> Uh, it, it means it means so much. Um, God, good God, this uh, you guys are like these are like my two best favorite matches. This 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 room and this this crowd. There's something I can't even put my finger on it. About it. And also, probably probably extra emotional when considering it was your lady Mara that was going to be competing here. Talk to me about what that's meant to step in uh, and take and have this match here uh, sort of in her place. I mean, uh, this is great and, and I'm excited to, to play this guy, but you know, um, if, I could, if I could snap my fingers and have her here, um, I'd do it in a second. Very nice. Uh, it was pointed out to me 
It was pointed out to me by the amazing Frank that you just got 27 points, which ties William Bibiani's record. What do you have to say about that? He's gonna kill me. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna Dan Merle you? Mm. But William, but you heard it here first. William Bibiani is gonna Dan Merle, Dan Merle. Uh, ben, that is your name, right, sir? <laughs> ben Bateman, you're currently holds the belt. Gonna be fighting in Atlanta. You're gonna be, you're gonna be fighting in Atlanta against your faction mate. What are you feeling right now? Look, if you want to be the best of all time, you know exactly what you have to do. And this guy is the best of all time. So Atlanta is gonna be a special day. And uh, you know, obviously we, we found that we worked very well together. The preparation of this match was really exciting, but I know what I have to do. And I know how I want to end this season. So Atlanta's in my, it's in my sights. And uh, I have to say, knowing that he got Natalie Portman in the, in the wheel round, that was something that you guys had gone over. That's something that you had worked on him with. How did that feel for you to see, to see him dominate Natalie Portman? Well, okay, that came out. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> okay, okay, let me try that. How did it feel? How did it feel for you to see him bend Natalie Portman? No, I'm just kidding. How did it feel for you to, have, to see him do so well in that Natalie Portman round? I think the best players all learn something from each other. I learned things from, from John Roca. I've learned things from Oyama. I've learned things from Dan. I'm sorry, fourth round Roca? Yeah. <laughs> the second best of all time, John Roca. And, uh, you know, Dan and I worked on this, and I had a theory, and uh, it just so happened that it played out in, in the favor of that theory. But that's what you do when you're when you're in the best faction of all time. You work together to get those wins, and I was proud to see him win. So, back to you, champ, number one contender. I'll tell you, everyone should be so lucky. You know, Bobby, Bobby Gucci couldn't be here. This guy. We are so lucky. Bobby Gucci couldn't be here. <laughs> we sure. are so lucky. We are so so lucky. Thank you guys. This guy was a kick-ass manager, and you know what? I got texts from my manager back in LA. I obviously with Ben, I got texts from Riley, I got texts from Roca, I got BC here. We got everyone that's new to this team and this faction. We got the Barbarian and Gray and Mike and everyone else. And I am so effing thrilled and excited to play this season. Yeah. Last question. Do you think the Finstock Exchange is going to Dan Merle the league? Hey, we're keeping the belt no matter what, so. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh. You know, Kate, when you're part of the Finstock Exchange, you're wealthy, you can afford a challenge. So that's what the season is. Thank you. I wouldn't expect anything less. Ladies and gentlemen, your number one contender, Dan Moe! Thank you, Kate Mulligan, ladies and gentlemen. Kate Mulligan. Give it up for Kate. So, so much there, Mark. So much that just happened. Not only, look, first of all, you got to give a big shout to what Shazam just pulled off because they pushed, I mean, Merle, again, he had to, last time when he beat Irwin, he had to score a perfect game. In order to beat Shazam, he had to tie William Bibiani's triple threat record. Uh, he had to, he gets pushed to the limit, and that's what he did because William Bibiani fought back in that fifth rounder. He, he went through, because you've seen him in the past with a five rounder and where he just, maybe he, he doesn't know it and he's like, I'm not sure, but he dug deep and he hit that five and he made Brendan really work to knock him out of, the, of that particular round. So, and Meyer, he came into this, the super underdog, and showed once again, that's a future champion. I challenge nothing of what you just said. Yeah. Don't challenge it. Please don't challenge it. And more so, I feel like that is such a great initiation to the new era, to this season, to season seven, because you saw a match like that. That's what you're going to be getting all season long from all sorts of competitors. This is just the start of it, my friend. It is. And, I mean, that's the thing now, because you look at Atlanta. That was the thing. February 29th, we have our main event. We have the card. You have Emily Rose Jacobson in the, in, in the undercard going up against Alex Damon in the first inner geekdom match that he He's ever played and she is going to try because this is a big match for Emily Rose Jacobson if she can beat Alex Damon in his first one that puts a lot of spotlight she'll be two and one that would be another big win for the Finstock Exchange who picked her up in the draft and but the main event the main event now Ben Bateman who has said time and time again that he wants to be the best in the league what a way to prove it where you're going up against the three-time champion but by the way has never lost in a live event 
has never lost when he was going for the title. So this is Ben Bateman's biggest challenge, bar none. And the fact that Dan Merle could walk out of Atlanta that soon and become a four-time champion, it's, it's insane. I, we're booking that guy a lot of hotels and a lot we of flights really this are, year, yeah. I uh, suspect. And when you look at Dan Merle versus Ben Bateman, like Christian said, those tickets are on sale right now and on sale right now. The free-for-all in March in Los Angeles. Atlanta, L.A., a lot of live excitement that we're going to be announcing soon. And then we have some matches to premiere upcoming in the next few weeks. So uh, we're, we're going to be busy. It's, we're going to be very busy. Not and you'll be able sleep. to find the schedule. A lot of people have been asking, like, where's the new schedule for the season? You go to the schmodownalive.com. The schedule will be out very, very soon of all the new matches. We have announced some matches that are coming up, some of those like Jeff Snyder versus Ethan Irwin. That's right. John Roca versus Paul Oyama. Big match there, too. There's a lot of matches that are coming out. Corruption versus the family. There are a lot of big matches coming down the pike here. So make sure that you keep checking. If you haven't joined the Facebook group, for those people watching in the live stream, it's a very active community on the Facebook group. Go to Facebook group. Find the Schmodown group. Find us. If you're not a patron, if you want to become a patron, you should. There's going to be a lot of live streaming this season. We talked about at the beginning, the, the deal that we have now, the, the new partnership that we have with Skybound. You're going to see a lot more live streaming events this season. So check it out, ladies and gentlemen. It's I all thanks thank to these you. people. It's but all I gotta, thanks. I mean, I, I'm, am I great? Yes, of course. We all know that I'm special. You are. In a way that, that few people on earth have ever been. Yes. But the most special reason, the only reason we're here, is because of these fine people that are in this room. It the is. The community that's watching us across. They, not only have they helped build the Schmodown to what it's become, they're the only reason I've not yet deleted Facebook. That's true. Well, it, it really is. Mark's not wrong. It's about community. We said it the other day on SCN Live, and we say it here again, too. This is the best community ever. It is so, it is so strong. It is so incredible, and because of it, we are, we are able to build, and it's one of the reasons that we're able to build the way we are this season is because of you. So, and th before we go, I'd like to give a shout-out to our crew here today who really made this thing happen. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Noah. Thank you, all you guys. Really, really, Ben, PJ, the whole crew really, really a PC. Everyone, Megan, Megan, who's a, who's a saint. So many people, if I forgot you, I'll, I'll mention you again on SCN Live, I promise. But, but thank you so much. Really pulled off the event. Thank you to the Roulette Theater. And thank you guys. So, what a way to start the season, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Movie Trivia Schmodown Season 7. That's Mark Ellis. I'm Christian Harloff. We will see you this season. Yeah. Next season, it all changes. It's an entire different landscape in the Movie Trivia Schmodown. We are coming with the fire. Lightning strikes and then you're gonna know my name. We are Shazam. I'm here to claim my title now. I'm here, the king that wears the crown. You better back down. You're you gonna see the greatest down. ascension in the history of the Shmoda. I'm the greatest of all time. You saw what I do with one hand tied behind my back. Not anymore. I'm coming after everybody. You got it. We are going to make the Schmodown see things they've never seen before. The desire to raise some hell, because hell deserves to be raised in the Schmodown. Here we go. You should know my name. Do you know my name? You're going to know my name. Yeah, you're going to know my name. Let's see how this shakes out, kids. I'm the greatest of all time.